for about 20 minutes. And then she embraced Sister Sism and that she was so happy. And I said, how do you feel now, Mrs. Lewis? She said, oh, Brother Coe, this is a smashing experience indeed. <laughs> well, praise God. And we was able to teach those brethren the principles. And the very first week they were home in Assam, one thousand people in their ministry received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So there was about 10,000 that year that was filled with the Holy Ghost as a result of that touring throughout Asia directly. And when I went home, the Lord snatched me out of all of that and sent me to a little mission work, literally spoke to me to go to a small town in West Virginia where there were six believers and no one hardly had the Holy Ghost in the whole city of any denomination. Just literally grasped me by the collar of my suit and jerked me out of all of that and sent me to Wheeling, West Virginia. I never shall forget the disappointment of Brother Sism, who was a regional director. He came to Wheeling to try to persuade me that I had missed God. And you know when you're in mission work and you only got half a dozen members, you have to kind of get out of the ivory tower and even do some of the cleaning yourself. I didn't want him to see me, but I went over to clean the little chapel that was only 18 feet wide. Only had nine pews in the whole place. I was over there cleaning. Brother Sism came over. He did not intend to hurt me. He intended to persuade me. And he looked at me and shook his head when he seen me cleaning the church. He said, Billy, once you preached to thousands, and now you're a janitor. And I staggered like I was going to collapse on the floor. And when I got away from him, I fell on the floor, and I sobbed like my heart would break. A couple of days later, I took him to the Pittsburgh airport. And when his plane took off, I stood and watched it until it flew out of sight. And it was just a speck in the sky. And then it disappeared. I had stood there in silence watching him. And when that plane disappeared, I audibly said, and please forgive me for calling Brother Harry Sism Harry, but I've called him that for 30 years. And so audibly I said, Harry, I would like to go with you, but you see, I cannot. God has put me on the potter's wheel, and I must not resist the hand of the potter. He knows the future. And I must do what he wants me to do. I would love to go with you, but I cannot until I am made over again, until this flesh dies, that I might be prepared to do what he wants me to do and be able to do it and not lose my own soul. We not only want you to be mightily used of God, but we want you to have the foundation that you need, the strong structure that you need, to be able to save yourself from this untoward generation, this crooked generation. When you begin to do the work of God, and you step into a pulpit, or you step in a place of ministry, or you go into a mission field, a home missions, a foreign missions, wherever, you go out into the work of God, you need a certain strength and structure under you, a part of you that's going to be able to stand the attack of the enemy. So the Lord 
prepares you. Let me suggest to you certain minimum uh, guidelines and experience that you should have before you ever get out on your own by yourself, especially if you were to go into mission work. And believe me, foreign missionary work is extremely difficult, especially if you're a pioneer. It's hard enough if you're going to a mission field where there's already a very established mission, maybe a very strong mission, maybe you're going to step into a teaching position in a Bible college or something like that, which is a wonderful work to do and one of the greatest things that a missionary can do. It's difficult enough to do that. But if you're going to do pioneer work, if you're going into a brand new nation where there is no church, no believers, no one baptized in Jesus' name, perhaps no one even filled with the Holy Ghost, though many times there are, even though they are not baptized in Jesus' name, there is a minimum of experience that you ought to have before you do such a thing that you might be able to save your own soul. And it's no less difficult to go into a brand new city right here in the United States of America or Canada and start a work. You have to be made of carbon steel, practically, to be able to do it. But God is able to help us. But don't try it until you have at least a minimum of experience in going into such a mission with your family. Because we want you saved. You're already saved. And we want you to remain saved. We want your wife to be saved. We want your children and grandchildren to be saved. This is so important while you're saving others. One thing that you should have a stable, personal experience with God. If you've been a person that's in and out of the church, if you've backslid many, many times, and you've been in and out, you come in in revival time, and get on fire for God and you go real good for six months or maybe even a year and then you're gone again and this happens several times oh my dear person please don't get out on your own you won't be able to stand the test you've got to have a stable consistent experience with God you've got to have a little record a little background of walking with God through thick and thin through difficult times and if you can't walk with God with a strong church around you and a pastor pastoring you and calling you on the telephone you sure cannot do it by yourself you need a personal experience with God that has been stable for a long period of time for some period of time you need be you need to have some proof of being a real soul winner it is very possible to learn how to preach before you learn how to be a soul winner. I've even taught a few people how to preach that felt their call to preach before I taught them to be soul winners. And guess what? Anytime somebody starts preaching before they become a soul winner, they never become a soul winner. All they ever want to do is preach or teach and they are totally content to do that for years and never win a soul. One of the first things you need to learn to do is how to win souls, how to be a soul winner. One of the most effective ways, of course, 